recording starts now. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, June 13th, 2018 Journal Club. We have Gonzalo Castan talking about conflict, conflict free replicated JSON data types. Take it away. All right, I'll just share the screen. I think this is sharing. But not the correct one. Let me just one sec. All right, now it's correct. Can you see the paper and the notes? Yep. Yeah, all right, cool stuff. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, just let me know if you have any question. Just interrupt me. I might not see your hands. Then again, just go, feel free to interrupt me. So thanks a lot for the time. Let's uh, jump into the paper. So the paper is about uh, conflict-free replicate the JSON, JSON data type by Martin and Alastair. So really interesting paper, in my opinion, about um, conflict-free data, data structures, uh, which um, are, in my opinion, a super interesting way to sort of uh, solve a lot of uh, distributed problems when it comes to collaborative applications. So the basic idea of, of this paper is that they present an algorithm and the sort of a formal semantics for a JSON data structure that um, resolves the concurrent modifications automatically uh, locally in each and every replica. So there's no need for any type of consensus. Uh, the replicas can just modifi modify the, their own uh, local state optimistically um, following the algorithm and um, editing all the metadata that is needed the proper way uh, and they are sure that when they sort of uh, spread the, their modifications to the network, everyone will have eventually the same uh, state. So the, the state will converge locally. And, and this is super cool. So eventually we get uh, a peer-to-peer -peer network or a distributed network in which uh, different replicas uh, will converge towards the same state. Uh, no user input is lost whatsoever. Uh, we don't need any guarantees from the network besides that eventually all the peers will uh, receive the same events, so the same JSON modifications, and um, all operations are actually um, uh, performed locally without any need for consensus, any central entity to resolve conflicts and whatsoever. So this is basically what we're going to be talking today for, for this paper, and I really like to see uh, when I when I jump into papers, I really like to see it on a problem sol uh, problem solution type of um, uh, approach. So I would say that the problem that we are going to be uh, talking today, and the, the 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 authors explain that really well with a lot of examples, is that we've got a JSON um, JSON uh, data structure which is replicated to many different replicas, and um, they can be the different peers with the replicas can get offline and um, modify the um, JSON um, data structure at will. And then what, what happens when these replicas come back or these peers come back online and share the modifications they did offline with the others is that there might be some concurrent modifications which conflict, right? So that's usually what happens. And then we've got a lot of uh, consensus algorithms or uh, some other uh, centralized peers to sort of um, or centralized system to uh, make sure that the conflicts are resolved. But this uh, CRDT approach is uh, a bit different from that. Um, the solution presented in this paper is exactly to add a bunch of metadata and to, um, to the data structure itself and also to have um, a really well-known algorithm that will uh, make sure that different replicas can uh, res can apply uh, modifications in the in the JSON um, data structure uh, remote uh, locally and from remote peers without any uh, conflict. And I think that's really cool. Uh, it's really interesting result. And the really interesting thing about this paper as well is that we're talking about JSON, which is quite expressive already. So we can basically um, 
uh, build a lot of applications on top of JSON uh, uh, data structures, and that's exactly what uh, one of the most interesting uh, one of the most interesting results from these uh, data structures. So, so we're going to go really quickly through uh, introductions. So again, what what are CRDTs? Just some applications, uh, some examples of how. Uh, what kind of abstractions do we have? What kind of API do we have to locally handle these um, JSON structure? It's really straightforward what uh, everyone would expect from a JSON uh, API. And then we're going to jump into the implementation details and, and see how things uh, work more in detail. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So basically, I've gone through a lot uh, really quickly about uh, the introduction. Uh, we already know more or less the context that um, uh, JSON is kept in different replicas. Uh, changes are done uh, locally and spread across the network eventually. And eventually all the peers will get all the operations done on the JSON blob. So we don't require many uh, uh, guarantees from the network itself, which is really good uh, and, and, and opens up a broad range of applications for us developers. So. Uh, if we can think about peer-to-peer -peer networks. We can think about situations in which um, the network is really, uh, 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 really spotty. There, there's a bunch of uh, different different applications for for this kind of um, uh, JSON CRDT. And that's exactly what what is talked uh, through during the introduction. And uh, one really interesting point, in my opinion, is um, that there's the JSON CRDT also uh, aims at, or as a, as a side side effect, it, it does um, you know developing collaborative peer to peer or decentralized applications really easy from a developer standpoint because now we got into a situation in, in which all the uh, sort of a, I wouldn't call consensus but uh, all uh, what could have been a messy uh, uh, sort of a situation full of conflicts when merging different uh, operations from different replicas, it's completely abstracted from us. So that makes it really easy and really clean for, um, for developers. Obviously that all comes with a cost, but we're gonna see that uh, a bit forward. So um, as, as a really like sort of an introduc in, introductory, uh, um, sort of a, some, some ideas about what JSON is, or uh, I think we can skip this part. The really interesting part about, about the fact that we're talking about JSON CRDTs is that um, JSON has embedded uh, maps and lists and, and has also registers. So there are different types which can be embedded. And that's exactly what this paper, sort of a, uh, the novelty of this paper is exactly uh, how to create an algorithm and, and data structure which will be able to handle properly um, sort of embedded CRDTs because CRDTs have been around for quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's been quite a hot topic nowadays, but uh, it's been already used in many other systems and that's already uh, also uh, talked through uh, um, the, the paper. But the big thing about this, um, this paper is exactly now we can actually embed and make really complex and expressive their structures which are conflict free. And that's exactly what we aim at so, um, yeah, I think we can skip the JSON part more than this. So there's a, this is uh, about replication and conflict resolution. There's a really interesting point in my opinion. Uh, well, consensus have, has been a really hot topic as well as we all know. Um, and, and the really cool thing about CRDTs is that um, there's no need for consensus, right? So sort of a, uh, there's conflict resolution by default and we don't need to um, uh, reach any consensus, reach out to other peers to understand whether we can make these operations or not. So, and this is really powerful and, 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 and really interesting, sort of, a, uh, sort of a different approach and mindset. This is something that I'm, I'm asked quite a bit when talking about this with my friends and colleagues. So I think this is a really interesting sort of a idea to retain. So, yeah, as we've uh, already talked about, each replica has its own um, sort of a state or each, each peer has its own replica. Um, and we are basically um, aiming at three main principles when uh, sort of a, when we're 
when, when the authors uh, tried to come up with this algorithm and CRD JSON, they, they were really um, pushing forward this idea of strong eventual consistency without conflict, so that every peer in the network, if, get, if, if the peers get all the events which have been gossiped or spread on the network, then they will eventually um, converge to the same state. And also another really important point is that there's no, uh, no in user input should be lost uh, due to uh, concurrent modifications. That's some of, some of the CRTs I can think of like sort of a last right wing type of uh, CRTs in which uh, every time, um, if, if two concurrent uh, writes are done on a register, uh, the algorithm will discard the, the, the first uh, kind of write. So that's, that's not what's aimed at here. Uh, if, if there's any problem with, um, if there's any of this situation that most likely the CRDT will keep both re uh, results, we're gonna see that a bit forward. So yeah, we've, been got, we've, we've gone through all the contributions. I've got many notes, but you can look at it afterwards. Um, uh, again, the idea that this been, uh, the CRDTs uh, in which have been around for a while, but this is the first kind of work, published work to the author's knowledge that really embeds a lot of CRDTs, um, creating a really interesting data structure for applications and whatnot. So I think we can um, also already jump to, uh, so to maybe to the concurrent editing examples. So there's other approaches which I've already talked about, but also not that interesting. Again, CRDTs have been around for a while. Uh, here, the really juicy things start coming in. So the really cool thing about this paper is also they, they really uh, show in diagrams how the different uh, sort of a concurrent modifications um, uh, result uh, when, when there's a merging of the different uh, modifications, what, what, what is the final result, the final um, state in each peer. So, and th there's actually some really interesting um, edge cases, which we as developers and someone who are interested, anyone who's interested in this uh, uh, data structure really needs to be aware of, because they have to be handled anyways. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go through some of the examples of how the CRDT would uh, look like when two replicas do uh, concurrent offline modifications and then eventually share the modification with each other. So uh, basically a really uh, sort of a narrow subset of what would be, uh, how would the JSON CRDT work in a really, um, uh, in a different, bigger network, uh, if, if we will. So there are around four examples, five examples. Let's go through them really fast. And, and the idea is that we've got two replicas, the left replica P and the right replica Q. And then each of them start with the same states, uh, do different modifications, and then eventually uh, perform network communication. And, and then we can see how the algorithm resolves the conflict. Uh, so the first idea is already quite interesting. Again, we have to, oh, okay, so let's, let's see first. So we've got a, um, a map with a key, um, key val a value, key and A as a register. The replica P changes uh, the, the key to B, key's value to B and replica Q, key's, key's value to C, and then they perform network communication. This is a register, but because we don't want to lose uh, any input, the conflict resolution uh, is basically keep both of the registers. So we've got a multi-value register at the end of the, um, the conflict merging. Then again, this might not uh, make much sense on an application level, but the idea is not to resolve the conflicts in a way that it makes sense on an application level. And we're gonna be seeing examples in which this is even more, um, this, this uh, sort of insight is even more uh, interesting because what the CRDT JSON does is exactly making sure that both replicas end up with the same result uh, without having to uh, solve any conflict, right? 
It doesn't mean that on an application level, it makes sense that's going to be uh, others' responsibility developers, most likely. But as far as both replicas have the same uh, uh, state, then it's easy to, in a really deterministic way, to uh, pick one of the registers or do whatever. So the other example is also quite interesting. So our left, so we, we've got a map, colors, a blue uh, with uh, its value. Um, and the, the rightmost replica will actually, first of all, clear the whole map colors and then uh, add uh, the color green. Whereas the leftmost uh, replica will basically just add the red uh, key value. What happens is that because the rightmost replica has cleared the, the map uh, and the left one didn't even touch the key blue, uh, blue will be deleted altogether. So we get into a situation in which colors will have red and green. I think this is more or less sort of a, a um, sort of a expectable in a way. So there's not much of a really a weird result coming out of here. This happens exactly because the rightmost replica has actually cleared the whole map. All right. So for the next example, it's also quite straightforward. It basically uh, shows an example in which, in which two replicas concurrently create uh, an ordered list under the same map key. So um, we start with an empty map, empty document. The leftmost creates a list uh, or, or creates a key or assigns a list to the key grocery and the rightmost do the same, but they add different uh, different um, ordered uh, items to the list. What we get at the end is that uh, the, the list will be ordered at the same, uh, the same way. So it doesn't really matter whether, uh, for example, X and M would, M would be uh, third and fourth item. What matters is that both of them converge and, and, and they both of them get the same uh, uh, sort of a ordered list. And this is gonna be, achieved through Lampard clocks, whatnot. We're gonna check how that works actually a bit more in detail in, the few, uh, in a few minutes. So this is ex exactly the same, uh, pretty much the same idea. It just keeps the whole uh, ordered list. It shows here that we can use these for, for example, text documents as an application level. And in my opinion, these is, are probably the two most interesting examples of what we can expect from uh, these JSON uh, CRDD algorithm. So, the first example is that um, we assign values of different types to the same map key. So uh, this map key A is assigned a map, whereas this, uh, uh, this on the, the, the rightmost replica, it, the, um, the key A gets a uh, list assigned. So what's going to happen is that it's impossible to meaningfully merge a map with an array and then again because we don't want to lose any user input we're going to keep both of them tag them as okay we've got this map type map has this value type list has this list and and then again the application level has to resolve uh, these conflicts so uh, there's always these sort of uh, edge cases in which um, there's some work that uh, the, the upper layers inter for application will have to perform, but there's really no other way uh, besides a human to uh, really make uh, make the decision of whether this makes more sense or the other. So that's another of the uh, of the insights of this example, and the last one is probably one of the most interesting in my opinion. Yeah, uh, please. The the map is unordered and the list is ordered. That's mm -hmm. correct. Um, yeah. And so I imagine that you could just have some arbitrary ordering scheme for when you merge conflicts on the map. For the list, is there a way that it gets ordered in this scheme, or is it left yeah. to the application layer to define an ordering? Uh, that, that's a very good question. It's, um, so the idea is that each of the, uh, the, the peers have a, an ID. Each of the replicas have an ID. Um, which is sort of a Lamport, uh, and they keep a, a Lamport clock, sort of a Lamport ID, in which it's possible to make sure that 
there's a casual order of what's happening in uh, in the network, right? So whereas whenever there's um, some items added to a list in one replica and, and add, uh, items added to a list in another replica, whenever there's this sort of a merging of both, uh, they're going to be merged according to the uh, sort of a, their IDs, their Lampard, Lampard clocks, in which we'll um, randomly, in a way, but uh, deterministically order the list at the end because of the Lampard clocks. Right. Even if they they've been sort of um, uh, supposedly uh, at the at the same time, they're gonna have the that Lampard clocks to sort of resolve that and 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 just de deterministically figure out which one comes first. Does this make sense or? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, really good question, and that's uh, that's I think one of the cool cool things about about this is that uh, also the you know, sort of a final ordering in lists is is uh, is deterministic. Both replicas have to set to have the same order. Um, all right. So the the last example is also really interesting in a way. So it's basically the same as uh, the example we've seen with the colors, in which um, in which the leftmost replica clears the whole. Uh, item of a to-do list. So we've got a, a map to do which has a bunch of um, uh, which have a bunch of items to do items and we've got the left replica um, clearing up the whole the whole to-do list and then we uh, we got the right replica actually setting the buy milk item uh, done to true. So when we merge a replica the same thing uh, has happened with the blue and, and whatnot we've seen before, what's gonna happen is that uh, because the left one uh, cleared the item, the right one only changed the done, we're gonna end up with a to-do list with one item in which it doesn't even have title. So this makes no sense whatsoever on an application level. But then again, uh, it's, it's not responsibility of the JSON CRDT to make sure that this makes sense on an application level. And this has to be handled by either the developers or also uh, they suggest in the paper. And that's actually a future work um, uh, suggested uh, to create sort of a sort of a JSON schema in which uh, sits on top of the CRDT uh, JSON so that these examples will be avoided. So then whenever there's such a thing as a, a to-do list without uh, a done or a title, uh, then just remove everything. So that would be probably what makes this the most sense. So yeah, that's basically it. These are the sort of a weirdest kind of merging examples. Everything else would be super sort of a uh, working as expected in a way in a JSON. Uh, so I think this is really, really cool to, um, really, really nice from the authors to really show visually what's actually happening under the hood and what's like the results really helps to give a bit of context. So this is exactly, ex exactly what we've gone through. Um, the only new thing in this um, section is the API. So again, the API is, uh, this is just sort of an example, sort of a pseudo code almost um, of what would look like a, a primitive JSON, a bunch of a JSON a CRDT, uh, a, uh, primitives or API. And the most interesting part for us probably is this IDX zero. So basically what we have is we initialize a doc, we set um, the, the value of, a, of the shopping, as a shop, shopping list as a list, and then we get the, the zero uh, sort of an item. It's, it's not quite an item it actually indicates, it's sort of a special cursor that indicates the head of the list. Um, and that's basically like the only kind of, what could be the weirdest thing in this API. Everything is quite straightforward and, and, and really easy to get through what's, what's happening here. Again, we insert, we, we get the, these, mm, this sort of a zero cursor, this head cursor, and then we insert after it 
the um, the eggs and when you get eggs in the first uh in the first sort of um position of the list and then we insert after again of the head the cheese and then we get the cheese being uh inserted before x so this is basically it but uh it shows um like uh, how how can we handle the json crdt but but that that's pretty much what would be expected anyways so um we've gone through of the through, through all of these we kind of i guess at this point i hope there's sort of a good understanding of what the crdt the json crdt um is supposed to be used to what are the applications how does it resolve uh uh the conflicts or at least how does the uh, final state looks like when some edge cases uh, happen in the conflict resolution. So now we can start actually getting into more of a sort of a implementation details in which we've got um, really what kind of metadata do we need to keep in the JSON CRDT and uh, what kind of operations and what kind of algorithms when we insert, when we clear, some of the elements in the JSON uh, uh, have to be in place in order for us to reach all the properties that we want with this uh, JSON CRDT. So first thing is how to um, evaluate the expressions they show. So the expressions are these. We're gonna go through them really quickly. Uh, there's a couple of interesting insights in them, but then I think the most important part is uh, how to, what are operations, uh, and how to apply the operations. And, and that's, I think, where we can learn the most. But uh, yeah, one interesting insight as well, or sort of a background idea, is that um, every uh, sort of an operation or every mutation on locally done on a, um, or performed on, on the JSON CRDT actually, first of all, generates an operation. So this is an operation-based, uh, uh, CRDT. So before applying the modification locally, um, the algorithm generates this, this operation, which is pretty much uniquely identifiable, not only locally, but in the whole network. And, uh, and then can be uh, gossiped or shared with the other peers so that they can also apply that operation and then be sure that everything sort of uh, uh, fits in properly. And one of them, uh, one of the items of that operation is a cursor. And that cursor, it's pretty much sort of a, a, a list of keys and IDs that identify a position in, in the JSON CRDT, a local position in the C, JSON CRDT. But uh, we're gonna see how this actually all comes together a bit, uh, a bit later on when we're gonna be talking about the applying the operations. So this is, uh, start a lot of uh, sort of uh, implementation details. This is a um, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with this sort of uh, operational operational semantics notation. Uh, it's really well explained in this link actually by uh, uh, the authors, um, and it basically um, it's sort of a formal uh, representation on how to evaluate the expression. So uh, by expressions I mean how to define a variable or how to um, how to um, sort of a fetch one index from a list and so forth, so forth. So I think the most interesting part is this IDX4. So this IDX4 is a uh, case in which we want to um, traverse a list um, in which some of the elements in the list have been deleted. So this is actually introductory to one of the most interesting parts of this JSON CRDT, which is how to delete elements once they were added to the JSON CRDT. The thing is that we cannot just remove the whole element. So for instance, if we have a, a list uh, somewhere in the CRDT in which has the element one, two, and three, if for some reason we locally want to remove the uh, three, the, the, the second element three, um, we cannot just uh, go there and remove everything uh, because other, other uh, replicas can actually be, m might be performing some operations on that element of, this, of the list and then 
uh, we are losing sort of a data that is really needed for converging the whole thing. So the idea is that each and every element in 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 the in the tree, the JSON tree, keeps a uh, set which is called a present set, and um, that set has the um, sort of um, uh, all the operation IDs that have been uh, relying on that uh, on that element. So basically, all the operations that are uh, that have been using that have used that uh, element for one reason or another, whether it's for traversing or creating it, creating it or whatever, uh, they they are represented in these elements metadata. So basically, clearing the state is just removing the operation IDs from the, that list of that element. And eventually when it's completely empty, then we can consider at a application level that that element is deleted. This might be a bit still confusing, but we're gonna go through it, through it again uh, later on. The idea is that I just wanna give a sort of a ex quick example of how to sort of, um, uh, sort of read these uh, semant formal semantics here. So the idea is that these um, this IDX for um, expression show us that whenever we have um, whenever we have a context in which the next element it's um, exists, and whenever it's uh, so the el the element exists and its presence. Uh, set the one that shows us whether the um, uh, there are operations still relying on it or not is empty then we can pass the cursor forward on the list because we are traversing the list without um, without uh, decreasing the index so meaning that we are again we are traversing a list just to give a bit of context we are traversing a list and we are going forward in, in, in the list. Whenever we reach this one element, we check its presence set. If the present set is empty, it means that the, 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 the element has been actually deleted and should not be considered when traversing the list. So we just go forward without decreasing the index. So that's basically what this whole thing, whole expression means. Um, and it's just an example on how to read uh, um, read this. We're going to see a bit forward how to actually clear um, the whole context and the whole um, elements a bit, a bit more, uh, a bit more in detail, or probably uh, in a more sort of a simplified way, I would say. So, and this is exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. So, we always have to keep all the nodes in the tree, no matter whether they uh, have been uh, deleted or not. And this is actually a bit of a problem when it comes to um, efficiency of space because eventually we're keeping locally uh, a lot of, we might be keeping a lot of elements that have been actually deleted. They're not gonna be shown to the, the application layer, for example, but we have to keep them because with the present set empty because we're not sure whether all the other replicas had as well deleted because if other replicas are actually changing this one element that we are seeing as deleted and then we get an operation in which change it and we don't have it there then the whole convergence uh, print, uh, sort of a idea is is not going to be it's not going to work anymore so this has a lot of problems one of them is that we have to keep a lot of unnecessary data when all the replicas in the network have already sort of a deleted this one element there's really no need to keep it there we can actually just remove it there, but it's how do we get to the situation in which we know that all the other peers have deleted the element? How do we do this garbage collection? How do we snapshot? That's another of the sort of a operations or helpers that can, can help us to do the garbage collection. So that's like one of the biggest sort of a open, open um, sort of um, points for the CRDTs or open questions. There's quite a bit of a discussion. Uh, uh, Pedro has been doing a really good job at explaining and putting down the problem and, and you know, 
checking the discussions. I think if you're really interested in, in, in this point, is I think it's really cool to, to go ahead and check this link and contribute as well. So, all right. So basically, we, we through this section, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we can understand how to read this. It's not that easy. It took me a while. There's also the link where we can uh, later on check uh, better how to, to read if you're really interested in it, and then introduce the idea of how to clear the state, how to delete elements, and um, and what does sort of a these uh, tombstone tombstone uh, sort of a uh, nodes, which are the ones which are deleted but not deleted from the data structure, uh, mean. But we're going to be already uh, seeing that again uh, uh, later in a few minutes. So the next session I section is when everything starts to get a bit more interesting or at least more practical. And, uh, and then I have also a diagram in which kind of shows the whole algorithm. So now we're getting into a situation in which I believe we can start getting through the, what kind of metadata we really need. And then what's the algorithm as well that uh, are gonna, is gonna make sure that the convergence happens without conflict. So again, I think I just, I, I already mentioned this. This is an operation based JSON CRDT. What this means is that even before the mutation is done locally, uh, an operation is generated. And the operation sort of uh, encapsulates all the necessary uh, information about what's the mutation that the replica uh, wants to do locally. And then also it uni uniquely identifies these operation uh, within, like throughout the whole network so that the replicas can sort of exchange these operations. So basically a JSON CRDT can be seen as, uh, you know, can be constructed by a set of uh, operations, right? If we have the operations, then we can go through and, and build up the whole JSON tree based on that. Um, and that's what we're gonna be talking about, how to generate these operations. And then we're gonna see how to apply the operations because that's like sort of a, the real, sort of an algorithm is exactly how to oper uh, apply those operations locally. So the idea is that, again, we're going to keep... Um, um, oh, actually, this is a really, really uh, interesting point. Uh, okay, so yeah, exactly, the mutation is represented as an operation, which is unique to the network. Uh, and before, um, before applying the... the the, the operation locally, you cre uh, we create the operation and then apply it properly and then yield it to the, the whole net. Okay, so we've got Lamport timestamps and the Lamport timestamps are really important to uh, sort of ensure that we have um, sort of a, that we preserve the casualty. So the order of the operations will end up being sort of a arbitrary, but they are deterministic. And what this means is that the Lamport uh, uh, clocks make sure that, uh, as we've discussed before with Evan's question, that uh, when we get an ordered list in two replicas and when we merge uh, them locally, we're sure that although the order of the two sets will be uh, random, so it might be that the replica A, replica B is first or second, but at least we're sure that it's going to be the same in uh, every replica of the network. And that's exactly what we want. So, so that's, that, this is the point of the, using the Lamport timestamps pretty much everywhere. So we've got on the operation, we've got the dependencies, and we're going to see that a bit later on uh, to, to make sure that operations which are concurrent, the order is going to be arbitrary, but deterministic, so that everyone agrees on it. So how does actually a structure look like? What kind of metadata do we need so that we can uh, safely uh, and guarantee the convergence when applying these locally and in other uh, peers? So an operation has an ID, which is a Lamport ID. It has a dependency set, and this dependency set is basically, uh, and this is really important for on a, uh, operation sort of a level, a dependency set is a set of Lampert IDs of all the operations that 
uh, this one operation depends on. And what does depending on really means, means that um, all the operations that have been um, uh, applied before, so let's say, uh, yeah, all the operations that have been applied before, this operation has been created, and it, the, if they are concurrent to it, they will have to be part of the dependency set. So we are sure that every time a peer or a replica will apply an operation, all the dependency set have to be met. Otherwise, there's no way to ensure guarantee. The, co the cursor we've already seen, so it basically shows uh, the path to a certain uh, uh, node or to a certain node in the tree. And then the mutation is basically just um, telling exactly what, what kind of mutation, whether it's an insert, whether it's a delete or a sign of this one node which is pointed by the cursor. So this is basically it. And an adjacent uh, CRDT can be uh, built up um, out of a set of these operations. So this is really cool because we can just throw these operations around in the network and apply those locally and we've got our CRDT algorithm. So I think one of the most important parts is exactly the dependency, the casual dependencies of the operation. So it's, it's basically, again, I've already explained this. So exactly the, the, the hard dependencies that an operation needs to be sure that already been applied so that it can be applied safely. That's, as, that, that's basically it. Um, yeah, and, and the main goal of this is that, uh, as it said uh, by here, is that the, sequen the sequence of operations generated at one particular replica will be applied in the same order at every replica because one operation can be applied only when its dependencies have been applied. Otherwise, it's going to be buffered and, and, and the peer will keep waiting for operations until, uh, to, to come until those uh, are met. So basically, I think we can um, uh, sort of uh, here, instead of going through this, uh, again, to the formal semantics of how to apply the, the, um, uh, the operations, I'm gonna actually show uh, the one diagram I've got. Can you, can you see this? Uh, I changed the screen, can you see it now? Yep. Okay, cool. All right, so at this point, what, uh, so to give a bit of context, uh, because uh, this might have kind of jumped a bit too ahead. So to give a bit of co a context, what's happening now is that a replica locally, uh, wants to change uh, the, um, the JSON CRDT state locally, right? So this can happen, or, okay, an operation is created, whether locally, when a replica wants to change the JSON CRDT, or through um, uh, receiving from uh, a remote peer, right? So what does the, al the algorithm now has to um, make sure that these operations um, are applied in a way that we get the convergence we need. So this is exactly sort of a diagram uh, showing how to go about uh, um, applying the operations in the local uh, state of the replica. So this is all about uh, metadata and uh, handling metadata in, in the different sort of um, in the different data structures of, 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 the, um, of the elements. So the idea is that, I, I think I, I actually didn't mention this before, so I'm gonna mention this first, sorry. So the idea is that we've got uh, operations, we've got uh, the, the nodes in the, in the tree, uh, and then we've got also um, the whole tree. So all of these three like sort of levels have different types of metadata, right? So the whole tree keeps a, uh, the whole JSON CRDT keeps a list with all the operation IDs that have been applied to it. The operation itself keeps its ID and then it keeps a set of dependencies. So the set of all the uh, operation IDs which 
uh, need to be applied so that these operations can be applied safely. And the elements uh, which are part of the, so sort of the nodes in the tree, as we've seen before, keep a set which is called present set in which shows or keeps a list of also operation IDs of all the operations that have in one way or another interacted with that element, right? So for instance, every time a, a, a node is traversed when applying an operation, that operation ID is added to the pre presence set of that, um, of that element. So this is basically like the three uh, sort of a types of, of metadata that the CRDT JSON keeps. And now what we're gonna see with the algorithm is how that those different levels of metadata are actually um, uh, sort of a manipulated when applying a local uh, operate, uh, an operation locally. Okay, so let's say that we've got a uh, local operation. So the replica wants to change one element. First of all, it uh, builds up the operation uh, as we've seen with all the, uh, sort of a, with all the elements that we've seen just now, and then we apply it locally. And what does that mean is that we've, we're gonna descend the tree uh, as uh, the way the cursor shows. So the cursor again is a set of sort of a nodes, uh, node keys, and then we just traverse the whole tree based on the cursor until get to the, to the node in the tree which will be uh, modified, mutated. And while we're traversing, we are adding the operation ID to the presence ID of all the nodes, as we've seen before. Once we get to the end of, on, once we reached the final uh, nodes pointed by the cursor, we can apply the mutation. So apply, let's say, uh, and, and by applying here, I mean not destructive, because the destructive is gonna be different. We're gonna talk a bit about before, so let's say that we are just assigning a new value or key value to a map. So then we apply the mutation, and then if uh, it's an all local operation, then we just buffer. Uh, we already applied locally. We buffered. Uh, we buffered the uh, operation, and then it's sent to the um, sort of a network so that the others can apply the same operation locally. The when a remote operation is uh, received locally, the, there's still a couple of checks that have to be done before. So first of all, we have to see check based on the applied uh, operations list, which is uh, part of the JSON CRDT, if this operation has been already applied or not, because then again, we have no guarantees from the network. We might get, get like two, three times the same, uh, the same operation. So we have to be sure that we don't, um, uh, we don't uh, apply more than once the same operation. So if the operation hasn't been applied, we're gonna see based on the dependency set of the operation and the operations which has, have been applied to the whole JSON CRDT, if all the dependencies are actually satisfied. Then that's exactly why we really need those dependencies on the operation uh, tuple. And one of the reasons, the other one is for clear the state, but we see that forward. So if the operations haven't been satisfied yet, then buffer it until it is. We wait until we receive more operations and then we, we check if we can already apply it or not. And then the process is exactly the same. So once we want to apply it locally, we just descend the tree based on the cursor, modify the uh, presence list in the different nodes that we traverse and, uh, and then we don't send it to the network. Or we might even send, depending on the protocol, if we want to just sort of a gossip anyways. Um, and that's basically the idea to assign when the mutation is sort of a assigning rather than deleting. The interesting part for deleting is that it goes through exactly the same um, through exactly the same algorithm, whether it's local operation or remote operation. But when it comes to descend the tree, what we do is instead of adding the not only we add the operation ID to the or sorry, instead of adding the operation ID to the present set of the nodes that are traversed at, uh, after, after it's deleted, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna clear the present set. So it's basically what's gonna happen. I've got it here. Mm, yes, okay. 
can show you here. So basically, again, we want to delete uh, a list, right? So we traverse the list with this um, uh, checking the cursor. When we get to the list, we traverse again all the elements in the list, and then we remove from the present set in each and every of the elements that are supposed to be deleted, we remove the dependencies of uh, the operation. So what this means is that we are, instead of just removing the element itself, because then if other, other nodes are sort of uh, making modifications in the set, in, in, the, in this element, and then we receive those operations, it's gonna be wrong, the whole convergence. But what is make sure is that we can get into a situation in which if all the operations that have been uh, somewhat um, dependent on these, uh, on these nodes are removed from dependency sets, then we can consider the elements as deleted. And that's exactly, when we get to the empty set, that's exactly the situation in which we get, we get the tombstones, so the nodes in which are taking space, but they're actually uh, not valuable anymore because they're actually deleted. But we have to keep there because we're not sure that all the other replicas know that uh, this uh, node has been cleared and they might be um, concurrently and offline sort of uh, modifying it. So this is sort of a really interesting, in my opinion, so obviously we, the trade-off here is sort of a metadata and space for uh, all this conflict resolution. Um, uh, and this is sort of a, one of the most important parts of, I believe, of the all, all algorithm to really understand it properly is the mechanics of uh, how to sort of um, how to handle the different types of data, metadata in the different uh, sort of the layers, right, in a way, or in the different um, objects. And um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like there's there's not much more to it. It's it's a fairly simple algorithm. It's just again all about uh, making sure that all the metadata is kept and then handled properly when when we're applying operations. Um, yeah, and 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 that's basically it again. Just for um, just just for kind of re. Um, Kind of go through these again. This is really important, in my opinion, because it's not really explicitly explicitly said uh, or written in the paper. But for me, that I was uh, that I've been sort of implementing this one Go library uh, of this of this algorithm and data structure. This is exactly what sort of a really opened up the whole uh, the whole sort of a data model and whatnot. Is it's all about operations being properly um, generated. And then it's all about keeping all the metadata at a document level, which are the list of operations that have been applied locally, operation level, the unique ID, and the set of its own dependencies, so that this operation can be applied only when all the other operations have been applied, and at the at a load level, which, node level, which keeps this presence and, and uh, to check whether the node exists or not. That's basically it. Um, um, and, and, and with all this sort of uh, algorithm here, and with all this metadata, we are sure that um, we get we get all the, the the strong eventual convergency without losing any modifications, and 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 we get all these guarantees from the uh, the data structure um, that we get all all replicas into the same state without any conflict. So I will probably skip this because I've been already talking for quite a bit. I'll probably skip these more formal convergence uh, definitions. I think we're gonna, we, we went through them anyways in one way or another. Um, basically, the in, there's an interesting part here at the end, if you're really into the maths of it, uh, the authors show that really well how to actually, the different, um, um, the different uh, sort of uh, steps in the algorithm, uh, make sure that we are always converging, converging really interesting reading. Uh, let's not go through that uh, because we've at least got a, I, I believe at least went through it a bit more in an informal way. So, so yeah, I mean, that's basically it, I guess. Uh, I hope it was not that confusing because it's, for me, it's still sort of hard to really, um, in a really succinct way, try to explain how the whole thing ha happens. 
but uh, that's it. Like the paper really shows how to sort of build up these JSON CRDTs, which you can embed all the uh, different types, maps, lists, uh, and also have registers, really uh, expressive data structure and make sure that concurrent uh, operations, concurrent mutations can be um, locally merged optimistically and, and being sure that it all converges. No need for consensus. This is super powerful in my opinion. I hope a lot of the you know, further work or sort of hot topics on garbage collection uh, and, and, and stuff like that can be uh, solved soon so that we can, uh, or, or in a way improved um, uh, so that we can, we can definitely get this into you know, our applications. And we have already quite, quite interesting libraries such as auto merge and applications, uh, also peer pad using, using CRDTs in a really, really cool way. So uh, really promising in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I feel like I learned a ton. Uh, one question that I had yes. uh, is, it seems like the additional metadata is going to like double or triple the size of the database. Uh, since you're implementing this, have you seen that, like that sort of growth, or how would you ex estimate the scaling? Yes, it's it's really hard to estimate the scale, but I would say that if there's a lot of peers, if, if there's a lot of replicas, and if there's a lot of uh, peers in the network making uh, modifications, deleting mostly a lot of uh, adding and deleting nodes, I think it's going to grow really fast. And 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 also the problem here is also. Um, when, if, if we're talking about the operation-based uh, CRDTs, there are other types, delta-based and whatnot, but the operation-based CRDTs, they also have the problem that whenever someone joins the, uh, someone needs some new peer joins the network, we have to sort of ship all the, or, or send all the operation sets that have been, so basically the local state that has to be shared with this new peer is basically the, the whole list of operations, right? So imagine this, there is, in the beginning of the JSON CRDT, uh, there was these operations, there is these sort of elements which were deleted and none of the replicas have the, that element anymore, right? Every time a new peer comes, we still have to send that. So not only on the storage side, but also bandwidth. I mean, network bandwidth, there's, there's a lot of a sort of a, uh, yeah, it, it seems that there's a lot of um, waste of resources still when it comes to operation uh, based uh, without snapshotting, snapshotting, without garbage collection. Um, I don't really have the, the numbers, but I've, I've heard from some of the meetings in the uh, IPFS dynamic capabilities of some of the sort of uh, benchmarks that have been done, that has been done. And yeah, it's, it, it, can, it can grow really fast. It can grow really fast. So I'll say that, results. Oh. yeah, that it's a problem to solve. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it seems like it would also depend a lot on like the average size of an edit mm. too. Like if everyone's making really, really small edits, like in a text document, it's going to be worse than something like this where you're editing objects yeah. in the list. Yeah, exactly. One of, one of the really cool uh, examples of, uh, not examples, but one way the, um, the authors actually suggest to create, let's say, uh, uh, Google Docs, right, based on JSON CRDT, is that each and every um, uh, sort of a, when we are building up a string, each and every uh, char character is actually an element in a, a list, right? So then people can go at the character level and, and change, remove, or change, and that, that all is going to be properly, uh, the conflict will be properly resolved. So you can imagine, like, uh, writing a thesis uh, collaboratively with a lot of people, changing and, and, and removing characters. And those characters, many of them will never have to be, you know, part of the JS, the, the, the data structure anymore. So it can build up really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was also going to ask, because I'm not like embedded in this or working on things sure. related to this, could you give me a, like a, overall sense of the landscape. I know there are, oper mm. like, between the different types of CRDTs, I know there are operational delta-based ones, I know there are state-based CRDTs. Yeah. Are there other kinds that I'm missing? And what are the, like, yes. I realize I this is like the prompt for a three-hour lecture. But. Yeah, maybe yes, but I have to, 
but I have to say that those are the ones that I've been also the most sort of reading and, and, and learning about. So, and I think that the Delta CRDTs are by themselves really, really interesting as well. And uh, as I've seen, like, it's been a super, super hot uh, uh, topic. And there's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of new stuff coming in. And, and, and I haven't even be, been able to, I believe, to catch up with every single new article which is coming every day on, on, the, on the field. So CRDTs only, and not even only JSON, but CRDTs. But I, I would say that those are the three main types of uh, CRDTs which still are being used. But, but then again, probably I will have to uh, do a quick research and I'll come back to you later on if that's fine. Yeah, totally. I also do one, yeah. I have a pretty basic question. I guess I'm wondering, um, like, have you run tests at all to understand, like, obviously this is dependent on the network size and the amount of like changes that have happened, but like, understand how quickly all of the offline nodes do reach um, like eventual consistency? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a really good question. And I think I haven't run any tests yet. Then again, there were some benchmarks. Uh, I can also dig that up on, on, on the, the stuff that has been uh, tested with uh, auto merge and also with the peer pad work. Um, but I guess it would all depend on uh, how big the network is and also what kind of modifications there are. Um, uh, and I think that, that that's quite dependent on that. I would, I would expect, I would expect. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's, yeah, one of the most interesting things to sort of uh, uh, start to having the, those benchmarks and tests um, of different types of approaches to the algorithm and, and different types of CRDTs because well, if this if this has to, if this technology really wants to uh, to be part of a lot of a, uh, sort of a applications, so a lot of applications build on top of it. There has to be still quite a lot of um, improvements to do, and and for those we only, you know, we can only improve if there are the metrics and and whatnot. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it's kind of interesting as well that sorry, one more thing. I, I kind of feel that CRDTs have been around for so long, right? Or for like relatively long when we when we think about all the this the decentralized and distributed or mostly decentralized not so much distributed but all these consensus ideas and how to really build start building interesting decentralized applications um, they're not that old but they've been been used for uh, quite a bit so I mean it's it's still a really ripe uh, sort of a research um, sort of field and I think that. Uh, I think it's really, really, really worthy to really put the, the effort and, and, and um, yeah, the resources to kind of push that forward because the applications can be really interesting, I would say. For sure, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to stop recording now. Cool.